All right, so welcome to Vinyasa Yoga Class. Namaste to you all. So David Ito here, you know me, David Ito Healing, if you want to follow me. So today's class is going to be very much adapted to the times that we're living in. And I'm specifically talking about the time of the year that we're in. So in Ayurveda, which is the sister science uh, and practice of uh, yoga, the year is divided into different periods. And right now we are entering Vata period. Vata period is the autumn or the fall, and it is a time when the temperatures fall and become somewhat breezier, somewhat, somewhat windier, and it's also a decrease in temperature and humidity. So what Vata means in Ayurveda is that all of a sudden, especially people like myself who are have a high Vata element, Vata is our air and space component. And that means that Vata allows us to adapt easily because, you know, we're flowing people but at the same time when the wind blows too hard then we can get carried away and we can become unbalanced so this is a time of the year also where we can feel some of that unbalancing effect on our practice but on the mat but just in general in life so whether you believe and you're interested in ayurveda or not it's just a uh, common sense to understand that as the season changes you know our bodies also change and have to adapt to it so when it's warm then maybe our yoga practice is one way when it gets windy and cold and dry then our practice might be a different way when when it gets really cold during winter, when it gets really wet. So, you know, it's also about us and adapting to our environment. So today's practice is going to be um, inspired by vata and grounding. As the air flows and we're moved from one side to another, also right now with the elections in the United States, this is also a time where we might feel a little bit more anxious, a little bit more stressed, a little bit less grounded. So today's class is going to be focused on vata and grounding so what are the asanas that ground us basically are the asanas that work our lower chakras you know how in yoga we also work with energy and the energy is distributed throughout the body but also main main energy centers are our chakras so from crown of the head to tailbone and you know how i'm always saying alignment tailbone to crown of the head you know i keep coming back and there's a reason for it it's not just for the aesthetics and the physiognomy it's also because it allows for the energy flow so this is not a chakra class i know but i just wanted to throw in a few elements for you to understand why i'm um, composing and why i've brought, put together this sequence for today so we're going to be working the lower chakras meaning you know, from the tailbone to the mid body and those uh, asanas that help us to work that part. So we're gonna be doing some hip opening, hers, hip stretching, and also a lot of, uh, somewhat of core. Not, this is not a core class, do not worry. All right, so let's start grounding ourselves. So if you like to sit on a towel or a bolster while we sit up uh, cross-legged upright position, wherever you are make sure that your spine is long making sure that you're comfortable that maybe your shoulders are relaxed your elbows are relaxed your neck and spine is long so i'm going to go a little bit backwards so you can see my proper alignment I like to sit on a towel when our hips are a little bit more elevated than our knees we are able to keep our spine longer and let's just close our eyes and start tuning inwards and noticing what's going on what's going on in my body what's going on with my breath what's going on with my energy my mind, all the things, all the elements that we can easily refer to or connect to, that we work on our yoga asana practice over and over again. 
and start with a three-part breath. Through the nose, we inhale, inflating the chest. Rib cage, belly expand. Exhale in reverse, belly, rib cage, and chest. Remember that our spine is long, our shoulders are relaxed. Let's continue like that for a few more rounds. Inhale through the nose, chest, rib cage, sides, and back. Abdomen, sides, and lower back. Inflate, top of the breath. Exhale, belly, rib cage, and chest. Exhale completely. Continue like that at your own pace. Body scanning, noticing the sensations in your body. As you reach your limit, your top of the breath, your edge, what does that feel like? And reverse, exhale. Letting go of whatever happened this morning. Letting go of any plans or expectations. You're just here and now. In this beautiful group of yoga practitioners coming together. Let's take one more round of breath, a little bit deeper this time. So let's inflate, inhale, chest, rib cage, belly, 360 breath like a balloon. A little more air, a little more air. A little more air, top of the breath. Open your mouth and sigh out. Ah, Releasing tension, releasing any unnecessary holding back. Beautiful. Let's start working the spine. Let's start working the kundalini. So in order to ground ourselves, we're going to make sure that our sit bones are properly anchored on the floor hands on the knees we're going to start expanding the chest open the heart lift your chin drop your belly top of the breath inhale and start bringing the rib cage to the right as we exhale all the air out navel to spine contract the abdomen cut then rib cage to the left top of the inhale to the front continuing like this at your own pace it's not about how fast you go it's about noticing and reading your body massaging lubricating the spine the vertebra the discs you know that asana and vinyasa yoga we work with the breath so the breath leads the body follows continue like that body scanning the slower you go, the more information you can pick up from your body on how you are today. The better you know how you are today, the better you can adapt your practice to suit yourself, your self-healing, your practice, whatever intention it is that brought you on the mat. The better you know yourself, the more that you can work towards that intention. Next time you come to the front, let's change the direction. Rib cage to the left. Exhale, really contract the navel and the cat. Rib cage to the side. Drop the belly, lift up the chin, open the heart, top of the breath. Start exhaling, go at your own pace. Tuning inwards. Meditation and movement, movement and meditation. A few more circles like that at your own pace. Noticing your range, noticing the state and the sensations in each vertebra of the spine. So tailbone and crown of the head are also engaged. And next time you come to the front, we will all meet in neutral position where we started. Let's start working the spine sideways. So lift the hands up. Imagine a high prayer, but you're sitting down. So can you anchor down your sit bones as you lift your shoulders, your hands, and widen the space between your rib cage? Every rib. 
become spacious as we extend the arms up feel the stretch inhale top of the breath drop the belly exhale bring the prayer down through the midline just using the core we start to twist towards the left yes can you use your core muscles and your intercostal muscles to twist a little bit more inhale lengthen activate the core exhale twist maybe a little bit more inhale lengthen top of the breath this time on the exhale we release the hands one outside the thigh the other on the floor behind us lengthen inhale exhale twist gently maybe bringing your gaze over the shoulder lowering the shoulders away from the ears inhale lengthen feel the abdomen feel, feel the stretch feel the intestines so good for our digestive system one more inhale exhale maybe twist a little bit more being gentle it's our first twist of the practice inhale the hands up high prayer exhale bring the prayer down through the midline we start twisting activating the core feel the abdomen being activated lengthen the spine inhale top of the breath exhale this time we bring our hands down one hand outside the thigh the other on the floor behind our backs lift up inhale deeply exhale twist maybe bringing your gaze closer to the shoulder close your eyes if you haven't done so exhale using the core mostly when we twist we want to twist from the core if it's just the hands doing the work we can lead to injury and we're missing out on activating the core as well beautiful on the next inhale start coming out of it high prayer feel the stretch imagine visualize your ribs becoming more spacious as you shoot your arms higher this very active pose earth to sky planet to heavens exhale bring the prayer down through the midline we're gonna go for our first gentle forward fold so bring the hands on the floor I'm gonna go sideways you stay the way you are if you're better off without the prop under your seat that is good otherwise stay as you are so we're going to start folding forward gently with a long spine natural spine so look at the screen if you don't know what i'm talking about and i'm going to start walking my hands forward any amount the spine is long so don't go beyond when you start noticing you're rounding your spine let's hold it there take a deep inhale top of the breath belly expands exhale maybe you can walk your hands forward a little bit more yes your fingers are like little feet walking forward inhale deeply lengthen the spine exhale maybe fold a little bit more and now we're gonna release whether you're using a prop or not whether you can bring your elbows on the floor forehead on the floor that doesn't matter it's just about the intention relax release any muscle contraction that's stopping you from folding forward if you're using a prop you could be using blocks you could be using a bolster wherever you are today it's about a mindful practice can you make sure you're grounding your hips your sits bones on the floor beautiful use your hands to walk them towards your body as you lift up we're going to change legs so bring the other leg forward we're going to go for another forward fold so once again tent up your fingers in front of you lengthen the spine and start walking your hands forward any amount as long as you still have a st naturally straight spine inhale deeply exhale completely maybe walk your hands a little bit more forward deep inhale exhale now release shoulders and forehead using a block or many blocks it doesn't matter or bolster 
Just make sure that you are practicing safely. Safety above all. It's about self-care. It's about compassion. It's about no harm. One of the main precepts of yoga is no harm. In Sanskrit, it's called ahimsa. Let's start walking our hands towards us. Beautiful. All right. So we are working the hips because working on grounding. Remember, it's about grounding for Vata season. So let's also start working the abdominal area before we start flowing. Don't worry, we are going to flow today. All right. So extend your legs. Maybe bring your seat forward towards the middle of the mat. We're going to go into modified Navasana or boat pose. So yes, we are warming up from the beginning of the class. So you know how much I like to workshop my classes. So whichever version of boat you take, what's really important is that you keep your spine long, that you're really anchoring down with your sits bones as you're lengthening with your crown of the head. Yes, I am a broken record, but this is the proper alignment. So if you're already rounding your back, grab behind your legs, lift up, open up the chest, shoulders away from the ears, open up the heart, then lift up one leg into tabletop, then the other leg into tabletop. And maybe this is as far as you're going to hold it. We're going to hold it for 15 seconds. So whether it's with hands supporting your legs or hands extended, that's up to you. We're going to hold it for 15, 14, 13. Are you breathing? 12, lengthen that spine, 11, 10, nine eight you can do this seven are you breathing six five four three two one and beautiful bring your feet down reverse tabletop so bringing hands behind the hips we lift up the hips as high as the knees or even higher if you can lengthen the neck lengthen the spine take a deep inhale top of the breath on the exhale stick your tongue out and go ha lift up those hips a little bit higher inhale deeply exhale bring the hips down second round of navasana this time we'll give one more um, uh, alternative. So lift up one leg, lift up the other, shoot the arms forward and or straighten the legs and point your toes. Again, so important to keep our spines long. We're going to count to 15. You come out of it if you or whenever you're ready. All right, let's do this. 15, 14, chest is open. 13, 12, 11, leg is long. 10, shoulders away from the ears. 9, 8, seven six five you can do this four three two one beautiful bring the feet down reverse tabletop lift up the hips lengthen the spine top of the inhale exhale open your mouth stick the tongue out ha <laughs> beautiful bring your hips back down third round we're really heating up the lower chakras the abdominal that would be from the first to the third chakras all right so you can um, do any of the previous uh, versions of navasana or we can do pie cups i'm gonna do it with you let's aim for 15 if it's just two that you can do that's totally cool look at the screen this is what a navasana pie cup looks like all right, so we're going to lowering down sacrum on the floor. Lower back is on the floor. Legs are lifted about a feet or two above the ground. Toes are active. And then we bring the knees in and out. All right, so we're going to do 15 pike ups, but you can do any of the other versions. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's prepare. And 15, 14, breathe. 13, 12, 11, at your own pace. 10, 9, chest is open, 7, 6, you can do this, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you did it, all right, feet on the floor, hands behind the hips, lift up the hips, reverse tabletop, lengthen the spine, inhale, top of the breath, 
Exhale, stick your tongue out. Ha! All right, I am sure that you are feeling the heat. In Sanskrit, we call it tapas. Not the Spanish tapas, but that's tapas in San Sanskrit mean heat and energy and effort. Coming into, all right, so coming into hands and knees, this is where the blanket comes in handy. All right. If you have sensitive knees like I do, you might want to use some padding. All right, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, toes are pointed or not, that is up to you. We start pushing down with our wrists, really feel the shoulder blade spread as we start making some circles. And breathe. Close your eyes. Lengthen tailbone to crown of the head. You might start to feel your shoulders being activated. If you're really pushing down with your hands, fingers wide as starfish, you will notice that very soon you're gonna start noticing the heat in your shoulders change the direction. As we also warm up the wrists, so maybe start exploring bigger circles. So important to work and warm up our wrists in this time of technology we're always on our phones and our wrists are getting tighter and tighter beautiful we're gonna reverse the left hand dial it to the side and then backwards so now the left fingers are pointing towards your left knee and we're gonna push down with the shoulders maybe this is just enough for you it's already tight for me too and maybe make it micro circles with the shoulders and the hips yes noticing the tightness maybe it's more tight in one part of the circle than the other change directions neck is long breathing body scan self-study self-study is another of the main precepts in yoga beautiful shake off the left hand the left wrist let's do this other hand so right hand dial it towards the side and then back and push down with the shoulders start making micro circles or not you could just stay still that's totally fine you might notice if you are a righty like me that your right wrist is tighter Gently making circles, making sure your shoulders are actively pushing down. Change the direction of the circles. Beautiful. And pull the right hand up, shake off the wrist. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to tuck the toes, bring the hands a few inches forward, and we're going to come into a downward facing dog with very bent knees, so bent that for many of us, it's going to, the belly is going to be touching the thighs. Okay, can we lengthen the distance between wrists and hips? Visualize the back part of the torso. In yoga, we call it the back gate. Can you lengthen the back gate a little bit more? So feel the back part of the spine lengthening. That means we're lifting our hips up and away. Now visualize the front part from the wrists through the face, chest, belly. Can you lengthen that as well? Uh -huh. That's the proper alignment of downward facing dog. Not many yoga classes will teach you that. Now our knees are very bent. Now we can start walking the dog. So then bring one heel down. Feel the stretch in the Achilles and the calf. Bend that knee, stretch the other one. And continue walking the dog at your own pace. Saying hello to the backs of your legs. Most of us have tight legs in the back. And making sure that the alignment of the torso, the front gate and the back gate, we're not losing that as we continue to walk the dog. Let's come on to stillness, bringing our heels down a little closer to the floor. 
whether the heels touch the floor or not, that is fine. It's not relevant. It's about the intention. All right, so let's start working the some movement more dynamically. From here, we're going to very slowly on the inhale, work our way to high plank. Lengthen the spine, bring the gaze to the top of the mat. Exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Continue like that at your own pace, making sure that you're going slow enough to really feel when you arrive. The transitions are important, but as are landing the asana, continue going from down dog to high plank at your own pace, pushing down with the shoulders, breathing mindfully, the breath leads, the body follows. Beautiful. Two more times like that. So good to move slowly, dynamically between two asana, two postures. Let's all meet in downward facing dog, child's pose. Bring your knees down up to you, whether you want to bring knees together and then have a more of a lower back stretch or knees wide apart for a deeper hip opener. So choose your child's pose. And then bring your forehead onto the ground, relax the shoulders, breathe into the belly, sides of the back. Can you visualize your rib cage expanding with every inhale? Spacious. Can you notice the sensations from tailbone to crown of the head? Can you relax your pelvis, your groin, any muscle contraction that is still there? Can you let that go? Beautiful. So important to relax the lower chakras, helping us to ground ourselves. Now we're going to actively push down with our hands, lift up the elbows off the ground, possibly even tent your fingers, and now actively push your hips a little bit closer to your heels. Yes, feel how that intensifies the stretch. Deep inhale, broadening the ribcage. Exhale, push away with the hands, bringing your hips a little bit closer to your heels, to the ground, rooting yourself, grounding yourself. On the next, inhale, tabletop, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. We're gonna start walking the feet towards the hands very, very, very slowly. We all meet in ragdoll with very bent knees. Grab opposite elbows if you want. You can also do other arm variations, just letting them go. Possibly also grabbing behind the hips and then lifting up the arms. This is a free form, so just make sure that you are relaxing the spine. Making sure that you're also trying to lengthen the spine. <sighs> Great for spinal rejuvenation when we go back downwards, when we're inverting like this. The discs in our spine get enriched with fluid, keeping us younger. All right, release any arm holding you were doing. We're going to bring our hands onto the floor or blocks. We're going to start lifting up the chest, flatten, straighten the spine. Our knees are still bent. Now we start to come up, arms swing around and up high. Prayer Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale the prayer down through the midline. Tadasana. Let's work the alignment of Tadasana. Once again, can you lengthen space between tailbone and crown of the head? Bringing the balance on all corners of the feet. Palms facing forward. All ten fingers energetically pointing downwards. Feel the strength of the mountain. The solidity of the mountain. Beautiful. That's what mountain pose is about. It's about grounding us. Can you feel the grounding energy in your feet? The legs and the feet are an extension of the first chakra. The first chakra is the grounding chakra. 
a chakra that gets most thrown off out of balance during vata season let's start flowing shall we inhale the hands up high prayer exhale forward fold prayer down through the midline hands onto blocks shins or floor release the neck inhale to a flat back lengthen the spine shoulders away from the ears exhale forward fold release bend the knees a lot start to come up with a straight spine arms around and up high prayer exhale tadasana mountain pose feel the strength of the mountain we're going to continue like that at our your own pace these are sun salutation preps hands up high prayer the slower we go the more we can work each asana feel the benefit of each pose flat back inhale exhale forward fold and the knees come up exhale tadasana continue one more round at your own pace if you need a visual you can just follow me exhale the breath leads the body follows inhale flat back exhale forward fold bend the knees arms rise up high prayer udvahastasana exhale tadasana let's start adding on surya a inhale the hands up top of the breath exhale forward fold inhale to a flat back exhale plant the hands shoot the left foot all the way back we are in low lunge start lowering the left knee untuck the toes bringing both hands onto the right thigh padding is recommended if you have sensitive knees let's hold it here just for one moment as we consciously and purposely lower your hips downwards as you also open up the chest shoulders away from the ears yes we are working our way towards anjaniasana once we've reached that nice hip flexor stretch on the left side so as muscle stretch we start to lift the hands up full anjaniasana inhale arms shoot up as your hips lower down a little bit more top of the breath inhale exhale hands down keep your legs your feet your feet as they are as you bring your hips backwards runners lunge flex that right foot toes towards the face spine is long top of the breath feel the stretch in the back of the leg if this is already a lot for you as it is for most of us you can bring your hands closer to you or you can use blocks wherever you are lengthen that spine top of the breath exhale start to bend your arms any amount bringing the belly and the chest slightly closer to the leg don't lose the flexion of the foot deep inhale and exhale relax the shoulders and the head wherever you land that's fine on the x inhale coming forward low lunge tuck the left toes lift the knee and now swing the right foot to the back of the mat downward facing dog feel the extension hips up and away from the hands and step or jump your feet to the front of the mat we all meet in a flat back inhale exhale forward fold bend the knees rise up high prayer exhale to dust at a mountain pose the other side inhale hands up high prayer exhale forward fold inhale to a flat back exhale ground the hands and shoot the right leg all the way to the back low lunge bring the right knee on the floor padding is recommended untuck the toes working towards anjani asana on this side bring both hands onto the left thigh can you open up the heart widen the shoulders 
away from the ears as you lower your hips a little bit closer to the floor. My front knee is in 90 degrees or so. Can you lengthen that spine? Tailbone to crown of the head. Now lift the arms up, full expression of Anjaniyasana. Shoot your arms up, widening your rib cage as you lower your hips, giving yourself a deeper hip flexor stretch. Deep inhale. Exhale, the hands down, bring the hips backwards, runner's lunge, flex the foot. Once again, if this is already very intense, use blocks. Bring the blocks just under the shoulders, lengthen the spine. And on the exhale, fold forward any amount. Inhale, top of the breath. Exhale, fold, and now release shoulders and the head. Feel the stretch, hamstring to Achilles tendon. We all have tight legs, that's just part of life, part of our biology physiognomy. It's about stretching them regularly. Okay, coming forward, low lunge. Bringing the hands, framing the front foot, tucking the back foot, lifting the hips, and then swing your left foot to the back of the mat. We meet in downward facing dog, removing the, 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 the prop from underneath us if you're using a tower. And the knees walk or jump to the front of the mat. We all meet with a flat back. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, rise up high, prayer. Exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Close your eyes. Align your mountain. Land your asana. Let's go a little faster, shall we? Inhale, hands up high, prayer. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step or jump to the back of the mat. If you're jumping, land in Chaturanga. Back bend of choice, whether it's baby cobra or you're ready for upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. One round of breath. On the next inhale, bend your knees, look forward. On the exhale, step or jump to the front of the mat, flat back. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up high, prayer. Exhale, Tadasana. Continue at your own pace if you want, if you already know the Surya A. Otherwise, follow me. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step or jump. Chaturanga. Back bend of choice, top of the breath. Exhale, downward facing dog, close your eyes, one round of breath. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward, step or jump, front of the mat, we meet in a flat back, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, come up high, prayer. Exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. All right, let's do Surya B. So start to come into chair, lower the hips. Uh-huh. And if you want a deeper chair, you are going to make sure that you can still see your toes as you bring your arms up. Can you frame your head with your biceps? Can you lower your hips a little bit more? Once you've landed the asana, that's where the benefit starts. Let's all close our eyes for three rounds of breath. Lengthen tailbone to crown of the head. Can you feel the lengthening of the tailbone towards the ground? Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step or jump to the back of the mat, chaturanga. Back bend of choice. Downward facing dog. Preparing for warrior one. Lift the right leg. Three legged dog. Can you really extend your right heel diagonally away from your hands, pushing down with your arms on the next 
inhale bring the right foot between the hands anchor down the left heel diagonally as you lift up warrior one warrior one is again about opening the hip flexor on the left side so square your hips forward that's how you get a nice stretch on this left side hand shoot up to the heavens the hips grounding lower top of the inhale exhale the hands down plank chaturanga back bend of choice if you're ready upward facing downward facing dog close your eyes one round of breath lengthen the space between crown of the head and tailbone lift up the left leg really shoot that ankle that heel away from the hands Oh, I prepare for warrior one on this side. Swing the left foot between the hands, anchor down the right heel with a straight spine. Start to lift up, squaring the hips to the front of the mat. Hands shoot to the heavens, hips ground to the earth. Feel the opening in the right hip flexor and so as muscle. Can you lower the hips a little bit more? Top of the breath. Exhale the hands down. Chaturanga, back bend of choice, downward facing dog. Close your eyes, two cycles of breath. Find your downward facing dog. Feel the grounding of your hands and your feet. It's now the hips that shoot to the heavens, hands and feet ground to the earth. Lengthen the neck, lengthen the spine. Bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, chair. Let's come up with a straight spine. Lower your hips a little bit more. Two more cycles of breath. Tuning inwards, feeling the grounding of the heels here. Exhale, Tadasana. How are you all doing? Yes. Let's continue grounding with more grounding asana, shall we? All right. Let's inhale the arms up high prayer. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Round the hands, step or jump to the back of the mat, chaturanga, upward facing, downward facing. All right, we're gonna lift the left foot up, a three-legged dog. Bend the knee, open the hip. Shoulders are still square to the ground. Can you lift the left knee a little bit higher? Uh huh. We're going to come back into three-legged dog. Knee to tricep on the left side. So left knee, left tricep. All right. I'm, I'm going to do five rounds. Continue. You know, join me or you can come out of it earlier and meet us in down facing dog. Ready? All right. Let's work the middle of the abdomen, the third chakra. Ready? And knee to tricep for one. Three-legged dog. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Knee to tricep for two. Three-legged dog. Knee to tricep for three. Three-legged dog. For four. Are you breathing? For five. Really hold it. Feel the core working. Beautiful. And now bring the left knee just behind the left wrist. Bring the shin diagonally for pigeon. So now we start working the back leg towards the back of the mat. Yes, pigeon is also very grounding because the whole purpose is to bring our hips and our sits bones and our hip bones closer to the ground. So from here, we're going to work proud pigeon first so that we're working the abdominal stretch. We're also opening up the heart can you lower your el your shoulders away from the ears as you lengthen the spine possibly possibly crown of the head 
more stacked higher up exhale fold forward you can use blocks to support your head you can also use the blanket to support your lower hip if this was really intense and it's just unbearable use the props to your benefit the more you know your body the no more you know how to work your body towards your intention so wherever you are try to relax your shoulders and your forehead but still actively grounding both hip bones towards the ground. Breathe deeply. And exhale completely. A few more breaths like that. Release and surrender to gravity. Notice the sensation when you finally release and let go of muscle tension. That's when the benefit of the asana starts. The only sutra from Patanjali, the sage that put all the knowledge together. Back in India, the only sutra that talks about asana says Stidam Sukam Asana Asana is about the balance between effort and ease When we try to muscle through life, muscle through asana We burn out and we can lead to injury When we go into deep asanas like this one and also challenging asanas like chair it's so important to find some ease in there sometimes it's just a mental switch sometimes it's just about learning proper alignment so that you don't have to muscle through effort and ease and this applies not just to asana on the mat but just in life to enjoy life we have to always have a little bit of ease within the effort Otherwise, it's just suffering. <sighs> Let's use the hands to lift up the hips. Coming back into Proud Pigeon once again. Lift up the chest. Lift up the chin, the gaze. All right, we're going to ground the hands. And I invite you to use the core in this next transition. Tuck the back toes. And then see if you can start lifting the hips. And then lifting the left leg. So you can use the core to slowly bring your hips up and then gently plant the left foot next to the right we are in downward facing dog all right we're gonna do the same thing all over again on the other side lift the right leg three like a dog bend the knee stack the hips can you lift the right knee a little bit higher shoulders square to the floor Feel the side extension, feel the rib cage on the right side extend, widen spaciously. Coming back, three-legged dog, knee to tricep, we're working that core, third chop. All right, are you ready? We're going to do five of them, very slowly, breath let. All right, inhale deeply, exhale, right knee to right tricep, exhale, three-legged dog, inhale. Exhale, knee to tricep, hold it for two, three, leg it on, top of the breath, exhale, knee to tricep, push down with the shoulders for three, three, leg it on, feel the extension, exhale, knee to tricep for four, push down with the shoulders, last one, three, leg it on, exhale, knee to tricep for five, Beautiful. And slowly bring the right knee down. Bring the right shin diagonally across the, mo the mat. And then start to bring the left knee further backwards. Pigeon. Lift up the chest. Can bring a prop under your right hip if that helps you to support yourself. Let's try to lift the chest. 
shoulders away from the ears, lengthen the spine, anchor down your first chakra, the perineal body. Can you bring your hips, your hip bones a little bit closer to the ground as you lift up? Feel the stretch on the left hip flexor. Top of the breath. Beautiful. Exhale, start to fold forward. Using props is recommended. You can bring a block underneath your forehead in any facet, the highest, the middle, the lowest. You can also use the back of your hands. Can you surrender to gravity? Can you relax every muscle in your body right now? Without resistance. Now what he's saying, the force of gravity, how we can use that force in our benefit. Not just about stretching muscles, fascia, ligaments, it's also about how to learn, to move, to navigate the world we live in, the always changing, ever changing world. Like Vata season, now it's about grounding ourselves. As we just get spacey in the head, thousands of ideas, we feel ungrounded. So our asana practice helps us to ground ourselves a little bit more. It helps us to be more mindful of what our needs are at the moment. Today, this week, this month, this year. Can you breathe a little bit deeper, 360 feeling? Your rib cage expands, spacious. Relaxing your pelvic floor, relaxing your shoulders. Pigeon is one of my favorite asanas, but I know that for a lot of people, this is just really tight. That's why we need to use props until we get there. It's all about the process. Use your hands to start lifting up the chest. Proud pigeon once again. Lift up the chest, lift up the heart. Gaze up to the heavens. Exhale once again. Let's tuck the right foot and start lifting up the torso, the hips, and then maybe just using the core, bringing the right foot next to the left foot, downward facing dog. Feels good all of a sudden after all the pigeon to be here. Bend the knees a lot slowly, coming into hero's pose. So, hero's pose means knees together, but you could also widen your knees if you need to. All right, and coming into hero's pose means that for many of us, we might need either a blanket underneath our knees or not. All right, so from hero's pose, we're going to go for camel. You know how much camel is good to open up the hips towards the front and especially the front of the body. So we start to lift the hips up, hands on our hips. Really important here, it's the hips above the knees throughout the practice. So wherever, however back much you want to go, you always want to keep the hips to knees. You can widen your knees a little bit, but we don't want to get them too wide. So try to keep them as close as possible. Hands behind the lower back, fingers pointing down as we start to open up the chest, shoulders broaden open up the heart start bending backwards any amount this is maybe where your camel is today maybe you want to tuck the toes and bring one hand down maybe bring two hands down wherever your camel is feel how you can surrender the control as you bring your hips forward can't see what's going on in the front, but you can trust that everything is okay. Beautiful. Bring your hands onto your lower back if you have gone deeper than that. Coming back into vertical, 
untuck the toes, coming back into hero's pose. Bring your hands on the knees. Notice the energy, the changes. Camel is one of the most intense asanas, as is full wheel. It really works all the chakras. Can you release your pelvic floor? Can you release any muscle tension in all parts of the body? Beautiful. Slowly bring your hips to the side. Coming into Shavasana. Corpse pose. Lying down on the floor. Widen your legs. Widen your arms. Palms face up. Can you lengthen the spine? Once again, making sure your spine is long. Tailbone to crown of the head. Shoulders are relaxed. Tuning inwards, letting go, no more action. Shavasana is about no action. The sort of meditative state where we just let the energy, the benefits, the effort of our practice sink in. Try to keep your mind clear. If any thoughts come to your mind, just imagine clouds in the sky that you can just invite to shift and drift away, relaxing the legs, relaxing the arm, relaxing the hips, the glutes, the spine, the shoulders and the neck, relax the head the face, the throat, the abdomen, relax the chest, let go, surrender, soaking in all the electromagnetic energy that you've created throughout your practice. Just let it go. Yourself, the force that brought you to your mat today, the force that guides you behind the scenes, the force that keeps you motivated on the path to growth, self development, self care. And yoga allows us to connect to that force. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Slowly start to move your neck side to side. Bend your knees, plant your feet, windshield wiper your knees, side to side, reawakening the lower spine, massaging the hips. Internally and externally rotating your hips. The next time your knees fall onto the right, roll over the rest of the body towards the right. Fetal position for a moment as you slowly start to come up to a cross-legged upright seat. 
bring your hands together at heart center, lower the head, bowing down as a way to seal the practice. Relax those shoulders. Feel the grounding connection of your seats, of the sits bones, closer to the earth. Feel that energy that we're building in our lower chakras to keep us grounded. Whenever you feel ungrounded, whenever you feel that your head is too speedy, that you're not here present, just sit on the floor and connect your lower chakras to the ground. Whether you are on a forest or on a 40th floor high rise, it's about the intention. Let's all take a deep inhale together. And on the exhale side out, ah, lifting your gaze up with a smile. Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for joining me. I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful day. Continue practicing. Namaste.